before we get on with our scripture verse for today and God's message for us, let us now pray first our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, together with love and conviction in our hearts, we declare, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you have your Bibles, we sing to His word, and we sing Thy word. Unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hello, everyone. Brother Tony Valenzuela Poito from your Feast Taglish session of the Feast Bay Area, 1 30 p.m. every Sunday. And today we welcome you to our Feast Light session. And thank you for journeying with us this far into our series, our ating special series brought to you by the Feast Bay Area, HEAL. And yung pamagat na HEAL, it's an acronym as we talked about hope, encouragement, aspiration, and love. At ngayon, we are at our talk three where we talk about aspiration. And I pray that we continue to journey together as a Feast family and rediscover what it means to heal through this crisis to where Christ is. And our ongoing key scripture story coming from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 46. At ang kwento natin is about a sandwich story between Jairus, a local synagogue leader who put down his pride, his reputation, his status as a rabbi, as a teacher, Kasi yung mga Jews at that time did not agree with Jesus but because namamatay at may sakit na ang anak niya, his one and only daughter, he knew he had to go to Jesus who he heard was always healing everywhere during his time. Pero yung pabalik at pauwi na sila sa bahay nila Jairus, all of a sudden, they encountered a disruption, an interruption because a lady, a woman of who has had an internal bleeding of 12 years, disrupted their journey and pulled the robe of Jesus along the way. At akala natin, itong story ay tapos na. This is it. The miracle happened. Pero wait, there's more. It was only beginning for our characters, for Jesus, for the bleeding woman, and especially for Jairus. And our message for you today, my one big message that I would like to preach you is this. God's timing is never too late. Ulitin ko po, God's timing is never too late. May tanong ako po sa inyo. How many times have you regretted not doing something na alam nyo would have helped you sa sitwasyon mo ngayon o kaya it would have helped you in a future time right now, in the next few days, in the next few moments, in the next few months? Tinanong mo or sinabi mo ba sa sarili mo, sayang, dapat ginawa ko yan dati pa, edi wala na ako sa sitwasyon ko na to ngayon. O kaya, sayang, di ko sinabi yung dapat kong sabihin dati. Now, it is time and effort lost. And indeed, time that is lost can never be returned. So what do we do right here, right now? Dear friends, we really treasure every moment that comes without regrets as much as possible. Because this opens up us to an attitude of gratitude that whatever happens now is a gift. Biyaya po ito. The fact you're alive and breathing, listening to this video, you're alive and blessed. Amen? And whatever has gone in the past is gone. And we have to learn to let go. At yung, yung parating pa lang from the future, that it's not happened yet. It's yet to come. So why burden yourself with so much worry? Ask me why. Why? Because God's timing is never too late. In fact, God's timing is never too soon. Also, God's timing is always 
perfect. Not in the way we expect it or plan it to be, but exactly just as how God designed it to be for us, for our particular situation, because God knows us more than we know ourselves. Pero konting disclaimer lang, mga kapatid, no? this does not mean that we don't do anything, that we just simply lay back and allow God to handle everything. On the contrary, we will learn more about this uh, on our scripture verse today. Friends, we open our scriptures, our gospel to Mark chapter 5, verses 27 to 29 muna. And we read, She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Touched. Hinawakan lang, siguro. Pinch lang yun, no? For she thought to herself, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Friends, the bleeding woman in this story is not just an actual woman sa kwento ni Mark, but she also represents the nation of Israel who has 12 tribes represented by her 12 years ng internal bleeding and the internal bleeding as the constant animal sacrifice sa templo ng mga Hudyo sa Jerusalem. No? But this woman also represents us today who have our own internal bleeding for the longest time. May tanong ako sa inyo, mga kapatid, how many times have you been afraid or doubtful to do what God has been calling you to do? Possibly, God is calling you to the religious life or the consecrated life. Pero natatakot ka. You're just having second thoughts. You have doubts whether um, maalagaan ba yung family mo. If the Lord will take care of your loved ones and parents, no? Mga siblings mo, dahil breadwinner ka, panganay ka. Or possibly, God is calling you to a committed relationship in marriage. Pero nagdududa ka kung siya pa rin ang, ang para sa'yo, no? Even despite the many years that you've been together as friends in, in, in your relationship, or kaya, God is calling you at this very time to be a friend to someone who you know needs your help right now. Or possibly to simply be a listening ear to someone who is going through depression, going through anxiety, worry sa panahon ng, ng pandemia, ng crisis na ito. If you know how God is calling you to be like Jesus today, ito ang natutunan ko sa bleeding woman na ito. Are you ready? Do not be afraid. Do it afraid. Kahit natatakot ka, kapatid. Kahit nagdududa ka. Even if you have second thoughts, if you know that is what God is calling you to do right now, do it afraid. We continue our scripture verse from Mark chapter 5, 20 to 33. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out of him, from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd passing around you. Panginoon, ang daming tao dito. Who can you ask who touch you? Friends, ang ganda na encounter na to. Even before Jesus not took notice of who touched his robe, Jesus took notice already. Notice how Jesus took notice. Not just that he felt healing power leave him, pero he felt that someone touched his robe. Despite the many people na nasa paligid niya. Wow! I can imagine. Ilagay natin sarili natin sa sitwasyon na to, no? Ang daming tao sumusunod kay Jesus, lahat sila nagtataka, nagchichismis siguro, nagtatanong sa isa't isa, oh, anong gagawin ni Jesus? Bakit papunta tayo kay Lajayos? Ano nangyari? Ay, balita daw. May, may sakit yung anak niya. We, we could imagine parang mga paparazzi ito, parang mga media men, parang mga reporter na gusto magpa-interview kay Jesus, mga fans ni Jesus na gusto magpa-selfie, magpa-photo, photo, photo uh, bomber sa kanya. Di po ba? Ang dami tao. It's a heavy and noisy, rowdy crowd na sumusunod kay Jesus. He's famous, no? Sa halos celebrity status si Jesus. But imagine out of all of this crowd, this woman who was suffering through the crowd because of her internal bleeding of 12 years, she was crawling through the crowd just so she could touch Jesus. Siguro kanina pa siya sumusunod sa kay Jesus through the crowd, almost being trampled dahil parang, parang, parang stampede ang dating, no? And she pulled his robe, maybe even just tugged it for a while. But this woman did not just pull Jesus' robe, she also pulled his heart towards her so much that he would turn around and search for her to stop and get disrupted sa pagpunta nila kay Jairus and look for her. Imagine the pain this woman went through. 
she didn't want to get noticed. As much as possible, mahawak niya lang yung damit, and that's it. Tapos na. How many of us are like that? How many of us just want to have a pinch of what God is calling us to do? And that's it. Ayo, ayo mapansin tayo. Ayo na, na makita tayo. Just so we could move to the side and be pushed aside instead of being noticed by God and by others. Friends, this woman's aspiration was to be simply healed of her 12-year-long internal bleeding. That was her aspiration. But Jesus' aspiration was to have a personal relationship with her, with this woman who was suffering for 12 years. Because alam niya, for sure alam niya, that this woman was suffering for so long. No matter what she was doing, kahit ilang doctor or surgeon or medical practitioner na, na nag-consult siya and, and spent her money, she was still internally bleeding. And she didn't want to get noticed kasi sa panahon ng mga Hudyo, panahon ni Jesus, if you have an internal bleeding, you are also considered ritualistically unclean. Unclean ka sa paningin ng mga Hudyo. And she didn't want to get noticed because she knew she would be ostracized. She would be marginalized and outcasted. And nung napansin niya, na napansin ni Jesus that Jesus was looking for, natakot siya. Either papagalitan siya ni Jesus, no? or she would be put the blame why did you touch the teacher? Ganon, no? But this woman's aspiration was born out of desperation. Later, I'll tell more about this. Pero ito ang tanong ko sa inyo, mga kapatid. How many times have you believed what society labels you? How many times did you believe what people are telling you you should be and what you should be doing in life? Now, it doesn't mean we, do, we don't take into consideration the wisdom of others around us. But my question is, in time of crisis, whose voice do you listen to more in your heart? That of yourself, that of others, or that of God? Because, dear friends, this woman's aspiration was born out of desperation, but Jesus' aspiration was born out of love. Friends, Jesus wants to call us the way that he called this woman. He did not single her out of the crowd so that pwedeng ma-embarrass siya or mapahiya siya. Hindi. Jesus singled her out of the crowd so that he can call her daughter. As he is calling us today, you are my daughter, you are my son, you are my child. So dear friends, let's turn to Jesus. Let's go back to scripture. Mark chapter 5, 35 to 36. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There is no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. Ito, may isang miracle na nangyayari sa harap nila mismo. The woman was healed and biglang may dumating na hindi magandang balita. Bad news that namatay yung anak ni Jairus. Na, namatay yung anak mo, Jairus. Huwag mo istorbuhin na yung, yung teacher. Huwag mo istorbuhin ni si Jesus. If I were in Jairus' shoes, siguro lalapitan ko si Jesus at sasabihin ko, Lord naman, sayang naman. Kung di tayo lang huminto para sa bahay, babae na ito, eh di buhay ang anak ko sana ngayon. Pwede naman, sumunod na lang siya sana sa bahay ko at dun lang siya magpahil sa'yo. Inuna mo sana anak ko eh. How many times have we felt this the same way with God? How many times have you been disappointed with God? Ilang beses ka nagtampo? Sa Panginoon. How many times have you been disappointed with God's timing because His timing was not our timing? And if I were in Jesus' shoes, siguro sasabihin ko din, no? Kung ako talaga si Jesus, sasabihin ko, pare naman, nagdududa ka ba sa akin? Nakita mo na heal yung babae sa harap mo? Chillax ka lang, relax, nagmamadali ka eh. O, sige nga, alis na tayo. Sige nga, ako yan. But what was Jesus' response? To Jairus, even before Jairus could say a word, ang sagot niya, don't be afraid. Just have faith. Wow! So comforting to hear what Jesus is telling. And Jesus was already affirming what Jairus was experiencing in his heart. Friends, may na experience, may na experience kayong delay in your life, dreams that have been broken aspirations that have been put aside or forgotten, akala natin walang-wala na, just wait. God 
is in the business of bringing those dreams back to life. And in sabi ng mga scholars ha, yung salitang do not be afraid, sinabi yan sa Biblia 365 times. It's like the Lord. It's the Lord telling us every day of the year, 365 times in the year, do not be afraid. Doesn't this story sound familiar sa atin, dear friends? Nung nag-delay si Jesus para magpahil ng isang tao, nangyari din ito sa pinakamalapit sa puso ni Jesus, sila Martha at Mary, dear friends, dahil may kapatid sila, si Lazaro. Jesus got the news that Lazarus was already sick, pero sinadya talaga ni Jesus magpadelay so that Lazarus would die, but so that Jesus would raise them, would raise him back to life. And Jesus is raising you back to life as well. Friends, bakit ginawa to ni Jesus? I believe sinadya niya talaga na ma, ma, ma interrupt, ma disrupt yung journey nila because of that bleeding woman. So that his statement of simply do not be afraid, take faith, can help us see not to focus on the blessings, but to focus on the blessor. Yes, focus on the blessor, on Jesus who gives the blessing rather than fixating on the blessing. Di po ba? And in the way, I believe God in Jesus is telling us today, I am in full control of what you are not in control of. Friends, ni natin ma-explain bakit nangyayari itong pandemya. Why is this crisis happening now at this time? Nakaka-frustrate. Friends, we are not in full control of what is happening. Aminin natin. But God still continues to provide and give to us what we need to know and what we need to have at this time. And we make the most out of it. Friends, may tanong ako sa inyo. Have you lost your job because your company has downsized to, to adapt and, and to survive during this time? Declare today, kahit nawalan ka ng trabaho, dear friend, God is in control. Has your business closed down because it's difficult to pay employees? Nahirapan kayo bayarin yung mga empleyado at yung mga profits bumababa na. Declare today, God is in control. Dear friends, have you resigned from your career as an entrepreneur dahil nag-back down ng mga clients at walang mga projects sa industriya nyo? Declare today, God is in control. Have you broken up with your fiancé over the past year dahil papospon ng papospon, pakancel ang pangkancel ang schedule ng kasal nyo at ngayon naghiwalay na kayo. Declare today, God is in control. Dear friends, have you lost your relatives, your loved ones, your colleagues, your beloved lo- beloved ones? Not only to COVID but to other health reasons in this crisis. Declare today, God is in control. Friends, instead of asking God, when will all of this chaos end? I believe. God wants us to ask the right question. The right ask question we need to ask is this, Lord, what do you want me to do at this time? What do you want me to do at this time? Friends, being afraid in this crisis is normal po yon, no? It's a normal human psychological reaction to be afraid when your life is being threatened, when you're at risk, when you're experiencing caution, fatigue, fears can overwhelm us. But don't allow it because when we allow fears to overwhelm us, we become paralyzed to our God-given aspirations, especially the aspirations that He wants us to bring back to life in our lives. Again, Jesus is telling us today, right now, to you personally, that you are watching this video, do not be afraid, just believe. So let us not be afraid. We aspire to be God's instruments to others in this time of crisis. Just as Jesus responded to the pull of the bleeding woman, we also respond to the pull of others around us and the pull of God in our lives where He wants us to serve and how He wants to lead us. Dear friends, Jairus had the best part yet coming to him when he heard Jesus said, Do not be afraid, just believe. We respond to Jesus' pull for us and remember the lesson that he is in control as we aspire to become like Jesus friends we also aspire to be like Jesus for others in this time of crisis do not give up heal in the process reach out to Jesus not out of desperation but out of aspiration because we only receive his healing 
so that we can receive His unconditional love to know Him and to love Him more in others. Why? Because God's timing is never too late. God bless you. Tayo'y manalangin sa ngala ng Ama at ang Anak ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Mahal naming Ama sa Langit, kami po ay nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat sa isa na namang pagkakataon na kami muli mong tinipon at tinawag upang makinig sa iyong salita. Ipinapanalangin ko ang lahat na ngayon natitipon sa ginanap na feast light na ito. Itinataas ko ang mga panalangin, pangangailangan at mga pangarap ng bawat isa. para sa kanilang mga pamilya, sa kanilang mga hanap buhay, sa kanilang kalusugan, sa kagalingan ng mga may sakit, at sa ano pa mang mga kahilingan, puno ng pananalig at pananampalataya na ito ay ipagkakaloob mo sa iyong takdang panahon at pamamayaan. Nawa, patuloy ang maging pagtitipong tulad nito upang lalo ngang mabago ang aming mga buhay ayon sa iyong kalooban. Sa ngala ni Jesus, Amen. Sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Maraming salamat muli sa inyong panonood. Huwag niyong kalimutan na regular na magtipon muli sa ating feast light at siguradong mayroong magandang mangyayari sa inyong lahat. God bless you. Mayroong magandang mangyayari sa inyong